Shalom, family. Shalom, shalom. This is Brother Moshe Ben Yahud of Israel. Simply got another walking talk for y'all. I know it's been a minute, but here I am on this beautiful afternoon. On this beautiful Monday afternoon. Man, it's been a hot one today. It's like 93 degrees out here right now. That's the humidity, though. The humidity been packing a punch lately. But yeah, you know, I just want to touch base on social media again you know when you look at it and analyze it it's nothing but a competition it's all vanity and you just see how many people that really don't love themselves when they post on social media social media is the breeding ground for competition envy and jealousy you know if you spend too much time on that it will put a stain and weight on your soul you know on your spirit you know because you're going to start comparing your life to others, whether that's people in your family, your natural family, or people in this walk too, or people in your peers that you grew up in, like your classmates. You know, you might see people got it going on, but don't fall for the illusion. It's all an illusion because we all got our problems. We ain't perfect. Nobody perfect. We all got our trials and tribulations. Every last individual on this earth. So just because they may post an accomplishment or an event that's about to transpire in their life, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, you see your peers getting into relationships. That don't mean you have to get into, it's not your season to get into a relationship right now. You see everybody in competition with each other. You know, you got women competing with each other who could take the best selfies, you know, you know, wearing provocative clothing, you know, taking booty shots, pictures in their booty shots and all that. They don't love themselves. They don't love themselves because they're seeking validation from the world. And that goes for these simps, too. They give them power. These simps don't love themselves because they don't respect their own selves as men. They pit women on pedestals. They think that's, um, you know, what's above them. Instead of focus on the most high and focus on, you know, their purpose in life. You know, they go on an Instagram and look at all these Insta dots, man, you know, and give validation to people that don't even know in real life. And it's sad. But yeah, that social media is nothing but a breeding ground for competition, man. That's what's wrong with our people. We want to compete with the next brother or the next sister. You know, sometimes you got to detox from that social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, you know. Say, you know, you know, don't post your, you know, your people post their um, new cars or new house. That will make people jealous. They go, oh, God bless me with this new car, this new house. You see how people love beating each other up with materialism. That's why I say materialism is another religion that black people practice. It ain't just Christianity, um, Buddhism, Islam. Materialism is another religion that black people practice. We all practice materialism. Let's just keep it 100. You know, all of us as a people, we practice materialism. We got to break that off ourselves. You know, because all that materialistic stuff is vanity. And people get too caught up with that. They start comparing each other. Comparing each other's lives with all that materialistic wealth. You know, we're supposed to be one and trying to get that spiritual wealth. You know, the word says... Lay up the treasures in heaven where moth and rust no man could get a hold to. You see, the problem is we be too caught up on what others have. We want to try to stir up, store up um, earthly treasures instead of build up spiritual treasures. And you see, the churches don't teach that. They teach the prosperity doctrine. Oh, the mo they figure to, in order to be blessed, it's like you got to have more materialistic stuff, whether it's a house, a new car. A high paying job you know and it, and it discourages a lot of people that's trying to make ends meet you're going to have a lot of brothers you know they may work a you know, low wage job or 9 to 5 they might feel discouraged because they ain't good enough they're not making enough that's why I say this materialistic stuff has destroyed us as a people you know and social media ain't doing no help 
Now, you got positive stuff for social media if you want to promote your business or use it to teach the word, you know, share scriptures. But we know how the algorithm works on social media. When you post positive stuff, you ain't going to get a lot of likes or views. If you post buffoonery, you're going to get all the, um, all the um, likes and views. If you post buffoonery and negativity, that's how the algorithm works. That's how you know it's the spirit behind social media. But yeah, you know, if you're on there posting selfies every day looking for validation, you know, you have no respect for yourself. You don't love yourself because... Especially if you taking, like if you're a female, you taking um, pictures provocative, you know, in skimpy clothing, not dressed modest, you know, you showing all your breasts and thighs and skin, you know, you don't love yourself. You think that's all you have to offer the world. And all these men just going to look at you as a piece of meat, you know, real talk. Now, if you carry yourself classy and modest, you, you know, you may not get a lot of likes and views, but... Real men gonna appreciate that. You know, you carry yourself like a decent sister. You know, whether you know you're Israelite or not, you just dress modest, you know, cover up, you know, don't show too much skin, you know. You're gonna be respected, you know, by real men. These boys wanna see a half naked woman. Never know the difference, ladies. These boys, these boys and Simpson wanna see a half naked woman. But a man, especially a man of the most high, that's after the most high's heart. He want to see a woman covered up like a prize jewel, real talk. But you see, society don't promote that. They promote the um, the harlot culture, the whoredom. You know, everybody screwing each other like rabbits. You know, that's why you got all these soul ties running amok. You know, you got Israelites teaching a false doctrine that sex is marriage. That is false. You got to do things in decency and order. You see, like our ancient ancestors... They had to go, if they see a woman they desire and want to make a wife out of, they had to go get vetted by the father and the male members of that female's household, you know. And that's how it was done back in our grandparents' days, too, you know. Especially our grandparents, they had the right common sense. You couldn't just go take a man's daughter and, and um, have your way with her. You had to meet her daddy, and he grilled you. He said, oh, you, you have enough resource to take care of my daughter? You know, and if you didn't, you just have to take it. You just have to take the loss and build yourself up until you find somebody that you worth to take care of. But these days, since you got the Babylonian system, it's a free fall. That's why you got all these baby mamas and baby daddies running them up. You know, a lot of children being born out of wedlock because everything ain't being done in decency and order like the Most High Yah instructed. You know, and that's what Hashatan want. He want all these children being born out of wedlock to create broken families and broken people. But yeah, you had to, you know, before you dealt with a woman, you had to get to know her father, you know. It was a process, you know. And if she wasn't untouched, if she was a virgin, you had to pay the dowry, you know. You had to pay the dowry and all that. Have a marriage ceremony with witnesses. And then you consummate the match when you take it to the bed chambers and get it on and pop it. But you see, they do things backwards in Babylonian Western society. They want you to put the damn cart before the damn horse. And we got to break our people out of there because, you know, if you keep pitting the cart before the horse, you're going to have buffoonery. You're going to have none but broken people. You know, that's why I say, man, we at the end of this, man. You know, so those Israelites need to repent teaching that sex is marriage. No, that's not. You got to do things in decency and order. Like the word instructed us to do. You know, straight up. That's why you got a lot of, you know, Israelites. You got a lot of sisters in this walk being baby mamas, you know. And that's sad. That's sad. You can't always put it on sisters, you know, because it takes two to tangle. You know, the brothers that's making these sisters baby mamas in this walk. Y'all going to have to answer to the most high for that. Real talk. Y'all going to have to answer to the most high for that. Just because she had a beautiful face, she probably had an epic backside, you know, wearing the best garments with a nice head wrap. And you say, oh, you got googly eyes, and you started thinking with your male member instead of using discernment and wisdom. And you see, that's what happens most of the time. You know, and sisters got to stop falling for the smooth words of these um, brothers, you know. Yeah, they may know a lot of scriptures. 
They may not have break down precepts, but that don't mean they spirit right. They, most of them have ill intentions. They just want to snatch the peach, pile the peach. You know, you might get pregnant, and that's when they're going to flip. That's when they're going to the, fly the coop. You know, that's when they're going to fly the coop. And that's wrong. You know, the most I ain't pleased with that. Most I ain't pleased with that at all. But yeah, man, back to that social media, man. We got to stop using social media as a competition. That's what's wrong with our people. We look at social media as a competition. Straight up. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you start feeling discouraged. You get depressed. Scientists, um, science studies um, proved it. The more time you spend on social media, you get depressed, you know, because you start... You're thinking people passing you up in life, whether it's your peers, classmates, um, people in your family, you know. You know, sometimes you feel like you're being left out in life. You know, you want to ask, oh, Lord, why, why, you know, but we got to understand the most high, he's working in our lives. It may not be our season, you know, to um, get engaged to that spouse we want. It may or, or who the most high, let me, let me rephrase that, who the most high has prepared for you. You know, you might have to work on some things in your life. You know, you might have to try to um, overcome the flesh. You know, if you're a brother, you know, that struggle with, a, let's say you struggle with pornography, you know, spilling your seed to the um, pornography. Or uh, you got to, maybe the most high want you to practice semen retention for 90 days or six months. And then if you practice that semen retention for six months, he will bring you and he will introduce you to that daughter of Zion, you know. You know, if you uh, on drugs, you know, or drinking too much alcohol, accepts drinking. You know, you might have to pit down a brown liquor for a couple of uh, months and just take it light on the wine. You know, that's what I'm doing, you know. I've never been drinking this much brown liquor before. You know, I want to say, ever since all this started happening, I want to say since last year, 2020, man, I've been drinking brown liquor. I never used to be on that brown liquor like that, all tequila, but, uh, I was mostly a wine person, but I'm taking a break from all alcohol, you know, all praises, you know. You know, because, you know, sometimes if you're a brother or sister, sometimes you get lonely, you will drink. You know, my mama told me that today because I was telling my mama, you know, about how I started drinking brown liquor. She was like, son, you never be drinking brown liquor like that. I don't know you. She was like, I didn't think you drank that strong stuff like that. Like, I started it, yeah, and that's not good, too, you know, because sometimes you let your time in and you start inviting these spirits of depression and anxiety and self-doubt you're gonna grab that bottle of that brown and you're gonna and you're gonna want to um drink till you pass out you know i could testify to it for myself you know i could testify because you know some some nights or some days you know i get it have my episodes i'll be wanting to drink till i pass out but you know what all praises to the most high y'all the holy spirit intervene and stop me from going to the limit you know, real talk, I could testify to that. You know, sometimes I want to take shots till I pass out, but the Most High, His Spirit intervened, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, by the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah, uh, I could, so far I could say, I, could, I, drunk, I drink, but I don't drink till I pass out. And all praises to the Most High for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, but I'm taking a break from that alcohol, you know. You know, don't let the enemy weigh on you with these false and unclean spirits, you know, to weigh your um, spirit down. Because our hope is in Yahshua. Let me say that again. Our hope is in Yahshua, HaMashiach. And all things that's good comes from Yahuwah, or Yahweh, or Yahweh, or God. You know, however you want to call on them, you know. I don't judge my brothers and sisters that still say God and Jesus. That's a disclaimer I'm going to continue to make. But yeah. All things that are good comes from Yah. And we just gotta wait on him. We just gotta wait on him. You know, it may not be your season this year. It may not be your season next year. But we just gotta wait on him. And I know sometimes the enemy discourages us and sometimes we step out of Yah's will and we do things our way and the most high whip us. He'll spank us. He will spank us. Don't forget, family, he will spank us. To let us know that we got to rely on him. We got to rely on Yah. You know, like our ancestors did. Because he's our provider. Yahuwah El Shaddai is our provider. You know, Yah Yahre. 
Yah Yah Re. That's what it means. Yah Yah is our provider. Yah Yah Re. Or like the Jamaicans like to say, Jah Yah Re. Jah ja, Yah Re. You know, or Jehovah Jah Re. You know, but it's Yahoo Yah Re. Or Yahweh Yahweh. Or Yahweh Yah Re. You know, excuse me, my words coming out wrong. Like I say, English ain't our language, but hey, it is what it is, family. It is what it is. But yeah, the sun about to set in a couple of uh, minutes. You know, I'm just getting my walk on it. It's a little exercise there. You know, I want to go to the park, but I say, now nah, I'm going to just walk around a complex, do a few laps around here. I said, I'm going to do a walk and talk because it's been months. I want to say I did a walk and talk. Yeah, I think it's been months, at least a month or two. But like I say, all praises to the most high. Here I am doing one right now. Hallelujah. But I pray all is well with y'all family. You know, shout out to the CUC. You know, y'all just hang in there, man. You know, keep the faith. Keep the faith. You know, don't be discouraged or dismayed. You know. Keep up the good fight. I know Hashatan throwing his fiery thoughts at us, you know, whether it's through family members, loved ones, you know, co workers, even your dog, <laughs> even if you have a pet. You know, sometimes Hashatan will work through your animals, <laughs> just trying to get you off the path, you know, but hey, don't get discouraged. Okay, where we at? We're about to be at 17 minutes already. Let's see. I bury your crying stoppers. <laughs> yeah, the crying stopper number. That don't work most of the time. They talk about you're going to be anonymous. Man, they still going to find out you called the crime stoppers on them. You know. Like I say, man, you know, you got to detox from social media. You got to have your social media breaks. You know, because it could be addicting. It could be addicting. You know. But if you want that good peace of mind, you know, you got to get off of social media. And it'd be better just to spend time with the Most High through His Word, studying the Scriptures. And I think that's another thing that stops us from being in the Word. You know, we're too busy focused on the cares of this world instead of spending time with Yah and Yahshua and his in the word you know we overthink things too much and I'm guilty of that myself you know we overthink our lives too much where we may be at in life you know we figure like we ain't good enough and that could lead to overthinking and that's why I'm glad I brought up overthinking because social media is a catalyst of overthinking you know spending too much time on social media will be that catalyst for you to overthink things too much and that leads to unnecessary stress. Mm -hmm. That leads to unnecessary stress. You know, you start thinking life is a competition, man. You know, and that's not true. We gotta stop thinking that life is a competition, man. Just because somebody doing that or accomplishing that, that don't mean you have to try to do that or engage in that activity. And you gotta understand, family. You you set apart. You awaken Israelite brother or sister. You set apart. Being set apart and being chosen ain't easy. A lot of people throw that word around too much. Being set apart and chosen ain't easy. Because you're gonna spend many days and nights alone. People ain't gonna misunderstood you. They gonna label you all type of names. You ain't gonna have, you're gonna lose friends. You're gonna lose colleagues. You're gonna lose if you in a relationship, say like if you in the world. And you come into this knowledge, you might lose your girlfriend or boyfriend because they might not want to accept this truth because they want to still celebrate the pagan days, eat the unclean foods, you know, so you're going to have to take that L. You're going to take a lot of L's in this walk. But even though you take a lot of L's, you want to try to focus on getting the ultimate victory, the kingdom, you know, because you're going to lose some battles, but you want to win the war. Always remember that. Yeah, you're going to lose some battles. You're going to win some battles, but you want to win the war. You want to win the war. At the end of the game, you want to win the war. Yeah. You want to win the war. You know, you might, you might lose more battles than win 
more battles in this spiritual war. But you want to win the war at the end of the day. Because when you win the war, you're getting into the kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 So always remember that, family. You want to win the war. win the wall man focus on winning the wall but i'm gonna go ahead and cut this video short family probably do a few more laps around here you know i say to you shalom and peace